Oh, it's okay. No problem. Uh, where are you from, Julio? I'm from Colombia. Okay, nice. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the class. Um, we have Rafael with us too. Hi, Rafael. How are you? Hey, Rafael. Hey. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for asking you. That's good. I'm doing okay. I have my friend's dog here with me right now because really? I'm dog sitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she misses her family. Um, so she's sitting here with me <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rafael, are you from Brazil? Yes. Okay. I'm used to seeing your picture, so. Okay, okay. But I remember your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize your voice. Okay, it's nice to see you. Oh, we have a Maori in class too. Hi, Maori. Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thank you. How are you today? Um, I'm good. Thank you for asking. Okay, and you're from Brazil too, right? Yes. Do you live close to Rafael? Mm, I'm from Brazil, but I'm currently living in Mexico, Guadalajara. Ah, uh, you I told me that yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a terrible memory. I have to write down everything so that I can remember, but um, I forget, like, instantly. <laughs> 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 All right, thanks for coming to class, you guys. Um, so we'll see if more students come in. Um, yeah, another student came in now, Roa. Hi, Roa. Hi Roa, how are you? Oh, Roa, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hey, nice to see you. You're from Egypt, right? Yeah. Hi, hi, Michelle. Hey, thanks for coming to the class. It's nice to see you with us today. <laughs> okay. How are um, you? I'm doing okay, thank you. I'm happy that we have um, a lot of the regular students with us today. I think it'll be a fun class. Um, so we we're going to discuss yeah. a little bit about alternative forms of energy and maybe cutting down uh -huh. on like greenhouse gases and pollution. So it should be an interesting class because um, the information that we have um, covers like the pros and cons of each side of the story. So um, let me give you guys the link here to the article. I'm sorry, it's taking me a minute to get it. Hold on just a second. Okay, here we go. Okay, and Amaudi is talking about his vacation in Cancun. It sounds like it'll be really fun, Amaudi. <laughs> um, can everyone see the verbling chat here? Uh, yes, I can yeah. see. <laughs> okay, and and Mustafa put it in the um in the Google chat just in case you guys aren't able to see it. So I'm going to open um I'm going to share my screen with you also so that you can see it just in case you can't. Um, open it on the other screen. Uh, so here um, we have a lot of information. So um, so this is going to talk about different um, different arguments dealing with alternative energy, um, and it'll have a pro and a con for for each subject. So the first one is reducing oil drilling. Then we'll be talking about making green jobs or um, jobs like installing satellite or not satellite solar panels <laughs> solar panels and maybe windmills um, also um, they'll be talking about maybe trying to get away from using oil and using alternative energy the pros and cons for that um, using subsidies um, renewable energy biofuels hydrogen nuclear power solar power so each of these has um, like arguments for and against them. So uh, we can read these together and I'd like you guys to also express your opinions after um, after hearing like each of the arguments. I want you guys to tell me which one you agree with more. 
So um, maybe we can start uh, with Mustafa. Uh, Mustafa, maybe you could read the pro for us for the first argument here for reducing oil drilling. Mustafa can read the pro, and maybe Julio could read the con. And then we could ask Rafael to give his opinion on which he would, which argument he would choose. <laughs> OK, so Mustafa, you can go ahead and start if you like reading okay, the pro can here. You, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Okay. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, just to check. Okay. OK. OK, so despoiling nature to get at the tiny trickle of oil we have left won't make won't make any significant difference in what we pay at the pump not now and not ever not ever and it won't make our country any least dependent on foreign fuel our thirst for oil is bad for national security bad for our economy and bad for the environment the push administrations our energy department says that lifting the ban on offshore drilling would have a, mag uh, a, margin a marginal impact on oil supplies and an uh, add a significant impact on prices. A drilling in the Arctic nation National Wildlife Refuge would be similarly, sim similarly futile shaving at the very most four cents of uh, a gallon of a gas by 2026. America needs to say no to bumping uh, up big oils, profits, and yes to for forging a new clean energy economy. So this is like natural resources defense conical. Build the clean energy economy. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. And maybe we could ask uh, Julio to read the argument against uh, reducing oil drilling, the con here. Okay, the con. It is estimated that there is um, enough oil and natural gas offshore and in no winners, um, wilderness, and no park lands in the United States, but currently ruled of limit for production by the federal government to full uh, 50 million cars and kids nearly 500 uh, million homes for the next 25 years. If Congress were to span the areas available for active exploration, we could make more domestic energy available to America in the future, while sending a strong positive supply, supply a uh, signal to markets today, potentially putting down downward pressure on prices. It will also strengthen U U.S. energy security by further di diversifying American energy portfolio and therefore mitigating the impact of a disruption in any one producing region of the world. Okay, very, very good. Um, so we can see arguments there for and against reducing oil drilling. Um, so Rafael, maybe you could tell us which of these arguments do you agree most with? Would you say that oil drilling would be a positive thing or a negative thing? Mm, none of them. Because um, because they are no, none of these two arguments are taking the environment into, into account. They are just taking, they are just putting, they are just using the economic approach. Uh, how can the United States profit? Uh, will be more profitable uh, choose, choosing alternative energy or or keep with the oil drilling? So. Uh, I, I don't I don't like the, the both of views I don't I don't like neither of of, of the views mm -hmm. of, uh, okay well you could say I don't like either of them yeah yes yes I don't like it. 
I don't like their their approach because they are not thinking about the environment. They are just thinking about profits. Mm hmm. Okay, very good. I I agree with you. Well, like here in the first one, um, maybe for reducing the oil drilling, um, they mentioned the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. So they are thinking a little bit about um, maybe preserving these places that are that have like a lot of wildlife or are like ecological places that should be preserved. So. Um, but yeah, like you said, like um, this one here, especially the con, like they're they're really just thinking about making money. This Exxon Mobil company. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Does anyone else have an opinion about this? Like, does anyone else want to want to say anything about reducing oil drilling? Uh, Mustafa, you might be affected by reducing oil drilling since you live in Iraq. Um, do you think that it would be maybe a good thing for the environment, or do you think it would be just an overall negative thing if they reduced oil drilling? If they reduce oil drilling, oil drilling mm -hmm. in your country, it would be a big problem for my country, of course. But you know the price is going down right now, so it would be a good if we reduce oil drilling. But there is no way because our budget depends on oil, so we cannot reduce oil drilling right now. So it's important to increase oil drilling. Okay, well, okay. So for you, maybe it would be sort of like a negative thing you said because of the economy. But do you think it would be positive for the environment in um, uh, of in Iraq be, or no? It would, it, of course, because uh, now nowadays uh, oil economy or oil like refinery, oil industry cause a lot of uh, pol pollution. Pollution? Mm -hmm. pollution? Yeah, pollution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah pollution in the air environment. So uh, nowadays, when sometimes when I go in the street of my city, for example, I see like a cloud, a dark cloud in the sky. So this is carry maybe a lot of poison gases or something like this. And people don't know maybe it would be effective, effective them on long term. So this is a bad issue. But what we can do? Yeah, yeah, it's a dilemma. Um, this kind of dilemma in English could be called a catch-22. Catch do you guys do remember that phrase, a catch-22? No, what's catch-22? Um, it's it's a phrase that means that it's like a dilemma um, that um, doesn't have a good solution, like. Both solutions maybe would lead to problems. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> yeah. I put the um the definition there in the chat box. So um so sort of I think maybe like each of these um each of these arguments is sort of like a catch twenty two, like there are positive things but there are also negative things. There are a lot of different consequences that we have to think about. Um, so let's go on and, and look at the second point. Uh, maybe we could have, um, maybe Rafael could read the pro here, and Amaudi could read the con, and we could ask Roa for her opinion. Um, so Rafael, maybe you could read the pro for us here. Green jobs for economic recovery. Pro. Citizens and community members everywhere are seeking smart solutions to our two biggest problems, the economic downturn and the ecological collapse. The nation is finally realized, realized that the solutions to these twin crises are linked. That is, because nearly everything that is good for the environment, and practically everything that is good in the fight against global warming, is a job. Solar panels don't install themselves. Why turbine, why turbines not manufacture themselves? Mm -hmm. Homes and buildings don't retrofit or weatherize themselves. In our industrial society, trees don't even plant themselves anymore. Real people must do all that work. A well thought that a well thought of shift to a clean energy economy offers more work, 
more wealth and better health to, to disadvantaged communities than does any plausible business as usual scenario. In a time of economic peril, let us never forget that everything that is required to make America's economy cleaner, greener and more resilient is a career pathway for someone. Or a business contract, or an entrepreneurial opportunity. We can power America through this recession by repowering America with clean energy. We can create millions of jobs that will make our people wealthier and the earth healthier. Let us begin. Okay, excellent. So that is the argument for green jobs, like jobs installing um, solar panels and um, wind turbines, different kinds of renewable energy. Um, so let's look at the con. Let's see um, if this is actually a, a good option um, according to this PhD here. Um, Amaudi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay, maybe I could ask you to read the con for us. Okay, con. Hard time is stir our appetites, uh, appetites, appetites? for appetites, appetites? Appetites mm -hmm. for easy answers. But those are too often deceptive and dangerous. Danger, dangerous. The green recovery plan is a prime example. Its proponents would have us believe that pouring, pouring. Tax, pouring, mm -hmm. pouring taxpayer money into rene renewable energy like solar and the wind would create an estimate, estimated, estimated? Mm -hmm. estimated 5 million new jobs and our reliance on important oil and give us clean air as welcome as welcome as those results would be, they're based on the illusion that renewable fuels are energy panacea. I don't Pansia. know. Just, Pansia. Pansia. And mm -hmm. that the and that the market is ignoring and is answer that wise politicians can clearly see, but the facts just don't support this. Yes, renewable fuels will constitute, oh my gosh, constitute uh -huh. a part of our energy mix in the future. But they present, they represent, represent mm -hmm. only a tiny fraction of our energy needs and won't lead us out of the economy and the environmental wild, wilderness. Wilderness. Mm -hmm. wilderness. Uh, taking into account the, I don't know, AEAs, EIA, EIAs, United States Energy, Energy Information Agency, uh, projected increases in electric, electric, electricity, electricity demand. Mm -hmm. The renewable sector would need to grow 90% per year for 22 years consecutively to meet the United States demanded by the year 2030. Uh, clearly these targets are overly ambitious and impractical. The government can't create wealth or jobs. All it can do is take from Peter to pay Paul uh, opening opening up a job in green industry a by elim, elim, eliminate in eliminating fossil, eliminating one in fossil fuel industry B. Great reading. I know there are some hard words in there, but you did a really good job. Um, have you heard this word before, Pansia? No, it's the first time. Okay, maybe we could read um, the definition for this word. Uh, can you read that definition for us? A solution or remedy remedy for all difficulties or diseases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's something that would um, fix all of the problems. Like a magic bullet is another another phrase for this in English. Something um, that that would just take care of all the problems like magically. <laughs> 
Okay. And and yeah, it's pronounced like panacea, panacea. Um, okay, so this man was saying that renewable fuels are not an, a panacea. So they, they don't just fix everything like everyone thinks. Um, so let's ask Roa. Roa, what is your opinion about this? Do you think that green jobs like installing solar panels and wind turbines would replace maybe the people that work in fossil fuels, like maybe the people that work in oil refineries? Okay, uh, I think that uh, yes, we have uh, to uh, to use uh, renewable uh, energy and uh, replace uh, replace it because I think that uh, our community, I I will talk about uh, Egypt, that we have a lot of uh, pollutions, a lot of kind of pollutions. Uh, so we have to replace if if we can to replace. Uh, our energy with uh, with uh, natural energy. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it, it will be it will be good because it will it will help us to uh, reduce the disease and the uh, that uh, like uh, uh, heart disease and the breathing uh, uh, disease uh, and also uh, cancers because uh, we have a pollution in uh, air pollution and water pollution and we have uh, a lot of solutions to uh, yeah. overcome this yes we have a lot of solutions in Egypt to overcome these uh, problems but I think we need to uh, be more uh, uh, ac uh, more active and more uh, supportive uh, to our government and the people yes have to to uh, help uh, the government to uh, uh, replace their uh, their uh, energy with the, with the natural energy, like uh, like uh, taxes here in Egypt we have taxes that uh, work with the uh, natural gas, mm -hmm. and it's it, yes and it's good. But uh, another people yeah they they don't uh, they don't want to uh, replace. Uh, the the, the 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 natural gas with mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry replace the petrol with the natural gas. Mm -hmm. So I think the government have uh, that has to legislate uh, a, a law uh, to force uh, people <laughs> to use. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> we need we need we need. We need to be more forceful uh, to force people to uh, replace uh, uh, these uh, things with with the with the natural uh, energy. Okay. Well, yeah. Sometimes, if you if you make it just um, like they can choose whether whether to stay with fossil fuels like um, like oil or. Um, like gasoline, a lot of people will yeah. just stay with what they're used to. So I understand yeah. what you're saying, yeah. Um, so do you think that maybe it wouldn't be so bad for the economy to to make green jobs and maybe to use solar panels and wind turbines instead of oil? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Because, because it, it, it will be good for our community and it's clean. Mm -hmm. And and uh, also if uh, if we search for oil in uh, in uh, in sea or uh, in uh, in uh, in area that it's biodiverse, uh, we will kill a lot of uh, creatures. So if we can replace these uh, things with uh, clean energy, it will good. It will be good. Yeah, it would be a lot better for the planet. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone else have an opinion about this? About um, about green jobs? About if they would help the economy or if they would hurt the economy? Uh, at in short term, maybe they can bring problems to the economy because everything requires investment, and I don't think the biggest companies are intended to. To to do these investments, um, considering what the current situation and economy and due to crisis and everything, mm -hmm. so if we perhaps if if there is a company who might be more visionary, they might uh, they want to they are willing to to look things further 
look to them to, to the future uh, and start investing in this uh, technology in order to to provide alternative sources of uh, provide green energy. Maybe mm -hmm. this company will have pr more profit in the future, and maybe they can convince other companies to do the same. Yeah, that would be really good. They could um, maybe like set a good example and show that they really can profit off of um, helping the environment. Because I think a lot of people are afraid that it will just cost too much money. But if, if they could find a way to, to use it to help the economy also, then um, it would be a really good thing. <laughs> yeah. I okay, we have. I think, oh. Michelle, in America, that uh, there are a lot of factories that and uh, houses. I see. Uh, I watch it in TV that works with the uh, solar energy. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, sun, sun energy. Yeah. Uh huh. Solar energy. That's right. Yes, it's solar. Mm -hmm. Solar. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's it's uh, there are in in America something like that. Um, there are some, but I think that it's not very common. Like, there aren't really companies that, I don't know, I would have to do research, but where I live, there were no companies that provided solar energy. They just sell solar panels for, like, individual people that would like to have solar panels, like, on their house, mm -hmm. but there aren't any companies that, um, that, you know, collect the energy and then just sell the energy. There aren't any companies like that. Okay. Yeah, but it would be nice if they started. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens that. in the future. Yeah, it would be really good. And I saw that Hiroki came to class to you. Hi, Hiroki. Yes, yes. Hello. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you today? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Good. It's nice to have you with us. So we were talking about alternative energy today. So um, this third point, it goes kind of together with um, with the second point that was talking about green jobs. Uh, this talks about energy independence. So this would be kind of um, getting away from using a lot of oil and depending instead on maybe wind energy or solar energy. Uh, so maybe this time we could ask Roa to read the pro. And um, Hiroki, you could maybe read the con for us. And Mustafa, you could tell us your opinion here. So Roa, you can go ahead and start. Okay. Uh, alternative energy for energy in independence. The legislation I am fi is finding today, Energy uh, Independence and Security Act of 2007, will address our uh, vulnerabilities and our depends in two important ways. First, it will increase the supply of al alternative uh, fuel sources. I propose an alternative fuel standard aerial, uh, aerial, aerial year. Uh, this year. Uh, this standard would uh, require fuel producers to include a certain amount of alternative fuels in, the, in their product. This standard standard would create new marks for foreign uh, products used to produce these fuels. This standard would uh, increase our energy security by making us less vulnerable uh, to uh, instability, to the instability of oil prices on the world market. The bill I signed today takes a significant step because it will require fuel producers to use at least 36 billion gallon, gallons of uh, bio uh, fuel in 2022. This is nearly a five-fold increase over current levels. It will help us uh, diversify our energy supplies and reduce our dependence on oil. Great reading. Very good. And let's have Hiroki read the con here. Maybe um, an, a disadvantage to alternative energy. Okay. Con. Uh, energy independence is a favored placebo. A rarely defined uh, goal trotted, trotted out for energy crisis but not achieved. There is now no li liquid fuel that can largely replace oil for transportation. We are stuck because of the scale of the industry and despite criticism, oil efficiency 
A gallon of gas refined from African oil is cheaper than a gallon of ma uh, main sparkling water. Uh, political alternatives like corn-based ethanol have required huge subsidies. Subsidies? Uh, uh, subsidies and mm -hmm. convulsed food markets but produced only 430,000 barrels per day in 2007, 2% of U.S. oil consumption. Politicians uh, pose with gimmicks like hydrogen cars, but they will have little near-term impact. Breakthrough technologies such as uh, cell cellulosic ethanol are theoretically attractive, but don't exist. Okay, nice reading. Very good. So, Mustafa, tell us your opinion. Do you think that um, alternative energy could um, help us to become independent from oil? Like, would it be a good thing or a bad thing, do you think? I don't think so, because I more agree about the second, the con, mm -hmm. when he said, like, it would be hard to, like, replace the oil or gasoline by this uh, kind of energy. It's, it is almost like uh, just uh, too attractive or theoretical uh, attractive, okay? Mm -hmm. But it do, do not exist uh, in reality. So we hear always, we hear, uh, like, about uh, electric cars or cars like with uh, working on maybe sun energy or something like that mm -hmm. but uh, may but maybe this is still uh, uh, not too common or hard because it's expensive uh, yeah. and yeah yeah and uh, it costs a lot of money maybe so it's hard to replace oil by by the other alternative energy or something like this mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like, maybe it's not very practical. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, do you guys know what subsidies are? Have you heard of this before? Uh, Mustafa, have you heard of subsidies before? Subsidies. Subsidies. Uh, like a collect of money or sum of money? Um, uh, sort of. By the government? Yeah, yeah, you can maybe read the definition for us yeah, here. Yeah, I read I, I read the de definition right now, so. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's read like uh, like this. Yeah. Um so so the money is is granted by the government and usually it's to um for like they say that it's always for like the public good. That they that they invest in different things. So in the United States, they've invested in corn to make ethanol, and so now they add this um, corn ethanol to all of the gasoline at the gas stations that um, people put in their cars. It um, all of it has a percentage of ethanol that comes from this corn. However, um, how much of the U.S. oil consumption is provided by like it was like a huge investment it says um, but how much of America's um, oil was covered by that sorry teacher can you repeat I, I missed this yeah sorry <laughs> it says like only two percent right yeah yeah, so um, so it it had like it says it convulsed the food market, so it made the prices of food go up a lot, and still, um, even though it was a huge investment and it changed the food market, still it only made a tiny difference in the U.S. oil consumption. So I can see where they're saying like maybe it's not practical to completely replace oil with um, alternatives. The black gold. Yeah, the black hole. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, learn a little bit more about subsidies, um, about this money that is given by the government. So we can see if this would actually help um, to like stop pollution or help the, the environment or if it's not really making any difference at all. Um, so maybe this time we could ask um, 
Um, maybe Rafael and Roa. Maybe Rafael could read the pro for us, and Roa could read the con, and then we could ask Hiroki for his opinion about the subsidies. So Rafael, you could go ahead and read the pro for us if you like. Subsidies for alternative energy. Pro, the subsidies in place allow the alternative energy industry to grow and technology to be dev developed, developed and mature and drive costs down. Alternative energy is most developed in countries where government subsidies have been in place for some time. Germany put in place strong incentives in the early part of this decade to encourage demand for solar modules, to encourage installations of wind farms and support the biofuels industry. Companies and countries with a more progressive alternative energy policy framework therefore develop technology and intellectual property at an early stage. Other European countries such as Denmark, Spain and Portugal also embrace alternative energy, therefore companies tend to be more mature in Europe. However, the potential for growth in the US is greater, and once a larger term framework has been put in place, we would expect the US to catch up fast. Okay, nice reading, very good. And Roa, could you read the con for us about the subsidies? Yes. Okay. Um, several recent uh, recent bills would uh, either uh, subsidies or uh, mandate uh, alternative fuel and or uh, okay or vehicles. However, the 30 plus year history of federal attempts to encourage such alternatives includes enormous failures and a few, if any, successes. After all these years, Washington has failed to grasp the serious economic and the technological shortcomings of these energy alternatives, which is why they needed special treatment in the first place. Federal efforts to pick winners and losers among energy sources and to lavish uh, mandates and the subsidies on the pre-perceived winners have a dismal track record relative to allowing market forces to decide the direction of energy in innovation. Okay, so there we have an argument for subsidies. Uh, they say that they, that they work and they can really help um, the governments to find cleaner forms of energy to use cleaner energy but then this one says that it's just a waste of money and it doesn't make any difference. So, Hiroki, what's your opinion about subsidies? Do you think that they work, or do you think that they're just a waste of money? I don't think it's a waste of money because, you know, the oil, oil will be disappearing sooner or later. So, after that, we don't have a stable energy source. And, and a kind of oil and coal and gas are releasing uh, CO2, so it's environmentally damaging. Nuclear power plants, as uh, you know, accident shows it's not uh, stable. It's not stable, or it's, it it accident happening could be fatal, and we don't uh, still not know how to process nuclear waste. So nuclear waste is just accumulating all over the world. Yeah. So in that sense, yeah, uh, such kind of government support uh, is very helpful to develop a new uh, alternative energy source, and it is said it's. It doesn't 100% guarantee that, uh, uh, like PC industry, if the many people uh, in, are interested in about that, and if many people invested over that, technology mm -hmm. develop very quickly. So, mm -hmm. and I think it's worth to try because I think it's necessary to try for the, uh, the human's future. Yeah, it's it's very important. And what about your government in Japan? Do they use subsidies to encourage? Yeah. They after do. The nuclear, yeah, even before the nuclear power accident, they did. But and after the accident, yeah, yeah they uh, did that more badly. But uh, however, uh, conservative government uh, established, uh, uh, so they how can I say it, uh, reducing, uh, trying to reduce uh, that cost. 
But mm -hmm. uh, researchers and community can, or users can get support. And uh, kind of, and in order to use this kind of solar panel or uh, generator, maybe smart grid is necessary. Kind mm -hmm. of, we need to rethink about how to uh, supply electricity. Now, uh, Japanese electricity uh, owned just four major companies, almost like a public company. Oh, so, okay. Mm, but uh, it is said it's not so efficient uh, for this kind of alternative energy source. Maybe we need to rethink a lot of things uh, to apply this kind of thing. Okay, like you, you don't think it's a very efficient way of encouraging them to um, to switch to clean energy, the subsidies. Yeah, I think so. Uh, oh, okay. Because without that, uh, after the oil or disappeared, what should we can do? Mhm. Mm yeah, maybe uh, we we need to change our lifestyle. We cannot rely on so much electricity anymore if that happens. Yeah. Without uh, developing this kind of technology. Okay. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so maybe subsidies are worth a try, even though um, some people think that maybe they're not super efficient. Like, um, if they can do any good, like, <laughs> it would be like a step in the right direction, perhaps. Okay, so let's look next at renewable energy. This is going to talk a little bit about um, wind energy and um, and also solar energy, like if we could maybe replace uh, the coal and um, the, the other forms of electricity that people solar, um, are utilizing solar, now. Yeah, yeah, solar energy is expensive. <laughs> yeah, it's Too. true, yeah. It's, it has like an initial expense, um, yeah. but then after you buy the panels, it's pretty cheap, like, it's free. <laughs> you just have yeah. to buy the, the solar panels, they're expensive. Yeah, it's free from the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe we could ask Hiroki and Musafa, maybe you guys could um, could read this one, and maybe we could ask uh, Rafael for his opinion. So, um, Musafa, do you want to read the pro, and maybe Hiroki, you could read the con, and then Rafael could give us his opinion here. Is okay. that okay? Okay. okay? So, okay. A zero CO2 US economy can be achieved within the next 30 to 50 years without the use of nuclear power. The US re renewable, renewable energy resource base is uh, vast and practically untapped. Available untapped. Window. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, untapped. Uh, untapped I, will, yeah. Yeah, I was reading from the screen share. I'll change it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, so, no, no. Okay. Untapped. It's right here. Avail available, available wind energy resources in 12 uh, Midwestern and Rocky Mountain states equal about 2.5 times the entire electricity production of the United States. Solar energy resources on just 1% of of the area of the United States are about three times as large as wind energy. Uh, if wind or wind teacher? Wind, wind. Mm -hmm. Wind energy, okay, short vowel. Wind energy. If production is focused in the high isolation, strong sunlight areas in the southeast and west, west. Mm -hmm. with, with the right combination of te technologies technologies, it is likely that even the use uh, of coal, coal, coal? Can, can be coal, can be push, uh, can be phased, phased. out, mm -hmm. Very good. phased out, along with the nuclear electricity. Complete elimination CO2 could occur as early as 2014, 40. 2040? Mm -hmm. 40. Mm -hmm. Okay, 40. Uh, elimination of nuclear power could also secure in that time frame. Very nice. Great job. So they say there's a huge potential for wind and solar energy, at least in the United States. Um, maybe, um, Hiroki, you could read that con for us to see if this is maybe a practical thing or not. You can see what this person says. 
Okay, Kong, uh, we want to be uh, be very clear solar cells, wind turbines, and biomass for energy plantation. Can never replace even a small fraction of the highly reliable 24 hours a day, uh, 365 days a year. Nuclear fossil and hydroelectric power stations claims to the contrary are popular but irresponsible. We live in a hydrocarbon limited world. Hydrocarbon? A hydrocarbon limited world uh, generated too much CO2. And major hydropower opportunities have been exhausted worldwide. OK, nice job. Good reading. So this is an argument maybe against uh, solar and wind energy. He's saying like it's not a very viable option. It's not really practical. So, Raphael, what's your opinion on this? Uh, would you say that solar and wind energy could replace maybe coal and nuclear power plants? To some extent, I agree with both arguments here. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> You're very because, neutral, like Switzerland. <laughs> yes, because uh, <laughs> the humanity needs to invest in alternative sources of energy. Um, and it's notorious that uh, the use of solar energy and wind energy uh, can can bring a, gr uh, a great improvement in the use of energy and the, in the responsible use of energy since they are they don't produce um, they don't produce uh, pollution to the to the environment so. Mm -hmm. They don't produce uh, carbon dioxide and other gases to the atmosphere. Uh, but I understand that they are not permanent. They are not. Uh, they are not steady, uh, since we depend on the sunlight and we also depend on the winds. So we can't. We can't have them. We can't have them 24/7. So it's mm -hmm. complicated to to establish uh, a steady production. Since we don't have enough, uh, we don't have enough means to to store this energy when they are when they are produced. Mm -hmm. So, so they they need to be used right on time they are produced. And since they we don't have how to produce them uh, 24 7 36 days, 36 five days per year, it's complicated to to use them. But uh, since the article means uh, that it's a uh, alternative source of energy, so they, I think that all these options are just for giving you, are just giving us a uh, an alternative, an alternative of it in the use of energy, uh, mm -hmm. sources of how can we re replace not not uh, ev not every time, you no, know, not always, but at least when they are highly demanded, um, when 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 there is a high demand for for energy, they can they, they can be put on 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 place, you know, to mm -hmm. to work to provide a, an extra energy. I think. Yeah. Well, why would they not be able to um, to store the energy? What do you think? Because now, like people that have solar energy in their homes they they have something it's it's sort of like a battery and it stores yes, but, the energy but, yes but these batteries are we don't have uh, enough sources to, to to make these batteries um, try to imagine if everyone has a battery a huge mm -hmm. battery how many uh, how can we discharge these batteries discharge, discharge these batteries so uh, I oh, think, like to throw them away? Yes, to throw them away. Thinking in the medium and long term, it would be very harmful for the environment. Yeah, I know. But so is like carbon and nuclear power. <laughs> like those are also really harmful for the environment. Yeah, this is another catch twenty two. I think. <laughs> Do you guys remember that catch twenty two? A situation that does not have a good solution, like um, yeah. either solution, it, it always leads to some kind of problem. <laughs> that, that's why I, I mentioned about smart grid. 
Mm-hmm. Selling electricity and uh, abandoning electricity to, to the electricity company. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why Obama mentioned about smart yeah, grids. It's, it's a little bit, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we by, have. By the way, oh, sorry. Go ahead. By, by the way, teacher, uh, <laughs> coming back to last lecture about uh, about uh, Korea, not Korea. Like America did cut the internet connection about them several times. Oh yes, I heard that on the news last night that yeah. the connection <laughs> was friends. that their internet was cut. It was America though that cut the internet. Punishment, yes. <laughs> oh, I thought it was North Korea that cut the internet. Oh, it was, it but it was America it be, that did it. It it would be a, a lot of damage if uh, North Korea cut the internet to the world about the world. No, America, United States cut the internet. Oh, I didn't know that they could do that. <laughs> Yeah. That's interesting. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think it's that's just like a political fight. So, um there's <laughs> there's still like um several points here that um that we have to like consider like biofuels, hydrogen, um nuclear power, solar power and wind power. So, um these are all different alternatives. And um, I wanted to take just a few minutes, though, to like ask you guys if you had the control to like to make a difference and to decide like which which energy sources people would use, like which ones, what changes would you make to to like do the best thing for the environment and also for the economies? Like, what things would you guys choose? Um, I'll, maybe I could ask Roa first. Roa, can you tell us, yeah. uh, would you try to use alternative energy, or how would you try to help the environment? Okay, if uh, if I have a choice, uh, I'll choose uh, a clean energy. Mm-hmm. Okay, because uh, I can uh, use it uh, perfectly, and I can keep uh, the, uh, the environment uh, clean. Uh, so if if I can do it, I'll uh, I'll do that. Okay, yeah, that might be a good option. And so, like, how would you um, make sure that the economy didn't crash, though, if you switch to clean energy? How would you give people jobs? What would you think? I think it 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 needs to uh, to make a lot of researches that uh, make that uh, assure that. Uh, uh, the economic will uh, will uh, will uh, hasn't uh, haven't any um, any bad affection when we mm-hmm. use uh, clean energy. Uh, I don't know how we we can uh, do these researches, but I think it's uh, before uh, using uh, clean energy we have to do uh, a lot of uh, research about economics and about the results if uh, if we use this energy what what are the results the bad and the good results okay yeah you have to like really weigh all of the information before making a decision yeah very good nice that's interesting Okay, I wanted to ask Hiroki too, like Hiroki, after we've considered just a little bit of this information, but um, I know you mentioned like nuclear power, that you don't like nuclear power, um, but what other alternatives do you think like you would um, you would implement if you had the power to change things? Here it is possible to hear, uh, because you know Japan is a kind of a hack and it's a very earthquake frequent area, a, a lot of volcano here. And uh, one possibility is mm-hmm. using uh, ground heat to generate electricity, or uh, a great what? Sorry. Uh, ground oh. heat, heat mm-hmm. underground. A heat generator, like, like yeah. solar. Yeah, underground or? has a lot of heat here actually. That's why mm-hmm. a lot of earthquake or volcano uh, in this island, Jap- Japan, so use that uh, heat to generate electricity. And and another possibility is a kind of uh, maybe compare with uh, you know desert area maybe not so many so much sunshine but uh, uh, since it is close to the ocean wind maybe some place or some uh, ocean uh, has a lot of wind so 
and uh, my university is uh, now, now uh, kind of uh, I can say making a plan and the ocean at the ocean like floating island to mm -hmm. on the island at, uh, that's very uh, it's almost like a ship and uh, and uh, on that island uh, a lot of windmills there and windmill is uh, smaller than usual windmill it's called wind lens mill. Uh, okay. That, that lens kind of thing <laughs> concentrates wind power to that small mill. That's under con con uh, a kind of experiment, under experiment now. Yeah, that's so cool. Wind it's power like and they are heat, uh, underground heat power, or uh, water power too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think hydroelectricity is really a really popular option too. Um, okay, I wanted to ask Mustafa also. Mustafa, in your country, I know we have you have like a lot um, different circumstances that than maybe um, some of the other Western countries. So, um, what changes would you make if you could control things? Like, would you would you make any changes at all, or would you would you leave things like dependent on oil? Uh, okay, about oil, uh, I'll try to. You know, here in my country, in every in every land or in every place or in every position, there is like an oil uh, reservoir. Okay, so what mm -hmm. I what we can do maybe what I can do maybe is uh, is also dependent on oil energy, but maybe I will try to make the harmless or the pollution more or less okay from the damage. Uh, the city or damage uh, the air or pollution of environment so like like there is like some technique to use the directional drill, drilling so it would be like this industry of oil or something like that the rigs all of these would be far from the city uh, from the town downtown so this will be mm -hmm. least the the environment pollution other thing otherwise like there we have like gases you know when you production oil there is like a gas a lot of gases born gases up to mm -hmm. now they don't use this gas and turn it to like useful energy and use it again or something like this so we we fire this on the air like now so you'll feel you will see like a fires from the large distance so we have to like use this in uh, the correct way the gas so it would be not the pollution will be, would be more or less uh, so this is what I can use maybe, and uh, it's not a problem to use other alternative energy, but maybe right now it would be more difficult because of the situation, and we need like a lot of money and, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's really complicated now to make changes like that. Very yeah, good. Yeah, otherwise I just wanted to refer like to a point. You know, we have like, this is well, all of this oil and, yeah. Sorry, I, I just, I have to do another class right now, and so okay. I'm a little bit late. I'm sorry, because it has to okay. start, like, right at 4 o'clock for me. Okay. I'm sorry. But you guys all did okay. really well, like, expressing your opinions. Um, I really enjoyed, like, listening to the different um, ideas, too, that you guys had. Thank you so much for telling us about your points of view. You guys did a great job. <laughs> Bye. Okay, Bye, I'll see Mike. you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Sorry that I have to go, but I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.